Chaos! Good morning! I was in the middle of realizing that my glasses looked like my car windows. My car windows aren't dirty. My dog just licks them. You know how that is. Those of you who have dogs understand. Good morning! Uh, Monday! Oh, yuck. What there? I just used this cloth to clean my computer screens too, so... It's uh, kind of saturated. This cloth will be done when I'm done. Done when I'm done. Good morning. Glad you're here with us for a little time in God. Glary. In God's Word on this Monday morning, April 4th, the 4th of April. 4422. 4422. Well, if you add the twos together, it's 4444. Four, four, four. Uh, good morning. I'm distracted. How are you today? Um, snowing out. Yuck. This is this is what what uh, greeted me today. If I can click the right button here, this is this is the view to the south of our house today. Which, you know, snow has its its beauty. God God certainly gives us beautiful things when He shows us uh, His Majesty. And, and and it is beautiful to see the the snow on the trees like that. But come on, to to quote our current president, come on, man, it's April. Can't we have a little a little more uh, a little more? Uh, yeah, Bonnie said a little more mud. Um, well, that is the next thing. We go from the season of snow and cold to the season of mud. Um, that's what you get for living under a bunch of oak trees. Well, good morning. Good morning, or good evening, Mooshtock. Glad you're here with us, brother. Geraldine and Neil, good morning. Glad to have you with us here. Brenda, good morning. Uh, raining in 39, high of 45. Yeah, we're headed for, supposed to be headed for mid-40s, but the last time it snowed like this, like we've got now, um, the temperature didn't get as high, and it took another day for the snow to melt off. Alexander's got driver's ed tomorrow night, so Bonnie's a little nervous that it won't melt off. But, uh, well, anyway, greetings down there in Kalamazoo. Jerry, good morning. 35 degrees and snow is gone. Yeah. See, I keep telling you that Wisconsin's different than... than although I am I am to the north. In, in all fairness, yes. where I grew up is three and a half hours south of here. It's not a straight line south. It's a move to the west south, but... Um, I don't believe Westby and Lacrosse have any snow now either. Uh, what? Madison for winter. Didn't yeah, Madison didn't. Madison down in the uh, south central part of Wisconsin didn't get any snow at all hardly this this winter. Uh, I'm imagining Milwaukee didn't either. Milwaukee is on the lateral with Marlette, or that's about as close as you can get. Connie, good morning. Harsha, more snow this morning. Yep. I know. I know. And morning for the from Joker Marchand Stadium. You know, you have a unique sense of humor, Michael. You know that I know that and Karen knows that. Say good morning to Karen for me too, will you? Or hello if you see her later if she's not near you. Jeannie and Bob, good morning to you. Oh, only a couple of games left down there, Mike, huh? Uh, season starts this week, I think, doesn't it? Regular season? Jeannie and Bob, again, good morning to you guys. Leela, good morning. Glad you're here with us. Ashley, good morning. Glad to have you here, dear. God's peace be with you. Verna, good morning. John, and uh, I'm guessing Janet, somewhere nearby. Uh, how nice it is, but I am sweating. Yeah, see, that's what Bonnie says. You go someplace where it's nice in the summer, in the... In, Cold up here in the wintertime, you go someplace south and it, it's warmer, that's nice, but then you're sweating and she doesn't like that either. I don't like this. Uh, she doesn't even like it when it gets above 70 up here in the north. <laughs> so, and that's without, it's usually relatively low humidity. Um, Kendra, good morning. And uh, praise, Kendra, you have to update me sometime on how Jimmy's doing. Uh, not here, I mean, it's a private message or something, but praise, good evening to you, and uh, Loretta, good morning to you and Dale. I imagine we'll be seeing you guys back here fairly soon. I hope, I hope. Mm. No, I know we won't, because your kids are headed down there pretty quick. 
Yeah, he's going to skip out. Your son, my head elder and congregational president, is going to skip out on Easter. Uh, talk to that boy. Well, good morning, all of you. I'm glad you're here with us and you put up with my my silliness. Let's go ahead and get down to the, the business at hand here before my arm starts to throb more. I do have a Cairo appointment this morning, too, so... Um, Oh, Kathy, good morning. Oh, you're down in Ilse Noise. Yeah, good morning to you. Glad you're down there with, must be down there with Todd, huh? Good morning. Say good morning to them for me too, will you? Um, all right. Daily prayer for individuals and families. Morning order. That's where we begin here, page 295, if you have a Lutheran service book. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips and my mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our, our psalm today, our psalm today, psalm... 77, verses 11 through 15. Psalm 77, verses 11 through 15. I will remember the deeds of the Lord. Yes, I will remember your wonders of old. I will ponder all your work and meditate on your mighty deeds. Your way, O God, is holy. What God is great like our God? You are the God who works wonders. You have made known your might among the peoples. You with your arm redeemed your people, the children of Jacob and Joseph. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Obviously, that points to our Old Testament reading today. In fact, I think if you look at Psalm 77, it's mostly about the events of the Joseph narrative, but I'd have to I'd have to open it up and look for sure. I don't know many of the Psalms in as much detail as I would like. You could read them fully every day uh, or uh, and, and still not know, I don't think, there's a lot of them, 150 Psalms. Well, I suppose if you read one Psalm every day for a week and then went to the next Psalm, um, maybe. I don't know. Older, the older you get, the harder it is to memorize things. But the more you use things, the easier it is to remember things. Hey, Glenn, good morning to you and and Anne and Grant. We'll be seeing you a little bit later this morning, I think. Um, anyway, Genesis chapter forty-seven, verses one through thirty-one. So I think I think we're reading all of chapter forty-seven. I didn't. I didn't look to check, but that, that seems to me it's quite a lengthy, quite a lengthy read here. So there will be sipping of coffee between uh, paragraphs because um, my mouth is dry, which is the effect of using uh, opioids, even if they are mild. So let's begin here. Genesis 47, beginning at verse 1 and then following. So find the right lenses. So Joseph went in and told Pharaoh, My father and my brothers with their flocks and herds and all they possess have come from the land of Canaan. They are now in the land of Goshen. And from among his brothers he took five men and presented them to Pharaoh. Pharaoh said to his brothers, What is your occupation? And they said to Pharaoh, Your servants are shepherds, as our fathers were. They said to Pharaoh, We have come to sojourn in the land, for there is no pasture for your servants' flocks, for the famine is severe in the land of Canaan. And now please let your servants dwell in the land of Goshen. Then Pharaoh said to Joseph, Your father and your brothers have come to you. The land of Egypt is before you. Settle your father and your brothers in the best of the land. Let them settle in the land of Goshen, and if you know any able men among them, put them in charge of my livestock. 
Then Joseph brought in Jacob his father and stood him before the Pharaoh. And Jacob blessed Pharaoh. And Pharaoh said to Jacob, How many are the days of the years of your life? And Jacob said to Pharaoh, The days of the years of my sojourning are 130 years. Few and evil have been the days of the years of my life, and they have not attained to the days of the years of the life of my fathers and the days of their sojourning. And Jacob blessed Pharaoh and went out from the presence of Pharaoh. Then Joseph settled his father and his brothers and gave them a possession in the land of Egypt, in the best of the land, in the land of Ramses, as Pharaoh had commanded. I guess it's Ramesses. And Joseph provided his father, his brothers, and all his father's household with food, according to the number of their dependents. Now, there was no food in all the land. For the famine was very severe, so that the land of Egypt and the land of Canaan languished by reason of famine. And Joseph gathered up all the money that was found in the land of Egypt and in the land of Canaan in exchange for the grain that they bought. And Joseph brought the money into Pharaoh's house. And when the money was all spent in the land of Egypt and the land of Canaan, all the Egyptians came to Joseph and said, Give us food. Why should we die before your eyes, for our money is gone? And Joseph answered, Give your livestock and I will give you food in exchange for your livestock if your money is gone. So they brought their livestock to Joseph, and Joseph gave them food in exchange for the horses, the flocks, the herds, and the donkeys. He supplied them with food in exchange for all their livestock that year. And when that year was ended, they came to him the following year and said to him, We will not hide from my Lord that our money is all spent, the herds of livestock are my Lord's. There is nothing left in the sight of my Lord but our bodies and our land. Why should we die before your eyes, both we and our land? Buy us and our land for food, and we will, and, and we with our land will be servants to Pharaoh. And give us seed that we may live and not die, and that the land may not be desolate. So Joseph bought all the land of Egypt for Pharaoh, for all the Egyptians sold their fields because the famine was severe on them. The land became Pharaoh's. As for the people, he made servants of them from one end of Egypt to the other. Only the land of the priests he did not buy. For the priests had a fixed allowance from Pharaoh and lived on the allowance that Pharaoh gave them. Therefore they did not sell their land. Then Joseph said to the people, Behold, I have this day bought you and your land for Pharaoh. Now here is seed for you, and you shall sow the land. And at the harvest you shall give a fifth to Pharaoh, and four fifths shall be your own, as seed for the field, and as food for yourselves and your households, and as food for your little ones. And they said, You, save, you have saved our lives. May it please, my Lord, we will be servants to Pharaoh." So Joseph made it a statute concerning the land of Egypt, and it stands to this day that the Pharaoh should have the fifth. The land of the priests alone did not become Pharaoh's. Thus Israel settled in the land of Egypt, in the land of Goshen, and they gained possessions in it and were fruitful and multiplied greatly. And Jacob lived in the land of Egypt 17 years. So the days of Jacob, the years of his life, were 147 years. And when the time drew near that Israel must die, he called his son Joseph and said to him, If now I have found favor in your sight, put your hand under my thigh and promise to deal with me kindly and truly. Do not bury me in Egypt, but let me lie with my fathers. Carry me out of Egypt and bury me in, the, in their burying place. He answered, I will do as you have said. And he said, Swear to me. And he swore to him. Then Israel bowed himself upon the head of his bed. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now that's not the end of the Joseph narrative. There's another section that uh, 
speaks of Joseph and his brothers. I've got to look that over and decide we may jump over that and go to, to Moses. We're, um, we're still at the end of Lent 4 in our reading, so we're eh, about five days, four days behind, four or five days behind. I got to decide if we're going to catch up here before Easter. To the text. So Joseph goes to Pharaoh. Now they've already made arrangements. He knew that the appropriate place for his family to go was Goshen. And yet, and Saturday, you heard um, that that uh, he had told his brothers to come and settle in the land of Goshen because that's where all the animals are kept. That's the uh, the area of grazing. Think of think of um, think of our um, Southwest and Dakotas and Montana, big grazing lands. Um, but when there's famine, there's famine. I mean, what are you going to do? Nothing's growing the way it should. Um, but that's also where Pharaoh's livestock is kept. And so um, Pharaoh honors Joseph and, and Jacob and has them settle up there in the land of Goshen. Jacob, Israel, is 130 years old at this point. Um, now, at one point, God had said no man shall live past 120 anymore. That should be the limit of his years. But by God's blessings, right? The exceptions are always God's blessings, that, that, that he has blessed them and for a purpose, for a reason. Um, we don't live past 120 years except by the grace of, of God. Um, I was talking to somebody the other day, and I said, you know, like men, as a rule, uh, no longer, no, no matter uh, who we are or what our genetics are, um, at a certain point in our lives, at a certain age, our, our prostate enlarges, and actually we develop prostate cancer. No matter who you are, when you reach a certain age, you're, you're going, and you, you may never reach that age, right? You, you might not live that long, um, and it's not a specific age, because that does depend on genetic characteristics and things, but God has, sin has, placed a limit on, on how long we will live. God said 120 years, but uh, by, by reason of his grace, some live longer. And, and jo Jacob is, is one. He lives 147 years total in our text. Um, Jacob comes and blesses Pharaoh. Jacob, Joseph brings his father Jacob before Pharaoh and he blesses him. Now think about this a little bit. In the divine service, in the conclusion of the divine service, um, if we, well, usually if we've had the Lord's Supper, um, the last words in the service before the closing hymn, um, the pastor turns back to the congregation after we've had the prayer of thanksgiving for the sacrament. Uh, the pastor turns back and says, the Lord be with you and with thy spirit. Bless we the Lord. Right? And that's how we end here. Bless we the Lord. We give thanks. To God for all that he has done for us um, in the divine service and in our life. It blesses God when we thank him. And that's what Jacob's doing. Um, it's, not, it's not that he's going in and going, you know, placing his hand on Pharaoh's head and giving him a blessing. It's that he's saying to Pharaoh, thank you for bringing us into your land and for caring for my family, for the people of Israel, the children of Israel. Um, that's what the blessing is, right? Um, bless we the Lord. Thanks be to God. We bless God by giving him thanks. It's a blessing to anybody when you, when you hear a thank you, right? I mean, we don't say or speak or verbalize our thanks often enough to our brothers and sisters in Christ and to all who serve us, right? I mean, God works through people. The means of grace our word and sacrament, but the delivery of that grace is through people, right? The pastor is the one who, who meets out the grace. Um, I shouldn't say meets out because that makes it sound like he can hold it back. He can't. Um, but he's the one who delivers it. He's the, he's the servant who brings it to you, um, for which we say thanks be to God. Uh, but when we help each other, right, uh, whether it's Helping a little old lady across the street, helping somebody uh, uh, find their spot in a hymn or in the hymnal, um, helping somebody get something off the shelf in the grocery store, uh, feeding the hungry, clothing the naked, visiting prisoners, um, helping people pack up their belongings and move them, um, 
giving people a place uh, when, when they have no other place, sheltering people. Bless we they who help us because they do so by the grace of God, by the love of God that's in them when they do it, uh, when they do it out of love and compassion. And, and we don't say thank you enough. And it's difficult because the old Adam in us says, well, of course they are doing these things for us. Um, but that new creation in us that, that is the love of Christ that's in us should give thanks. Now, thanks to God uh, that, that there are people out there who do these things, but thanks also to those who do them. Even to the unregenerate, right? To the unbaptized, to the unbeliever, we should say thank you for the works that they do. Um, the regenerate are not doing it for the thanks, right? They're not, they're not doing it to say, hey, look at me. Uh, but they are but, but they are doing it and they deserve to be thanked for it. Um, but those who are who are regenerate, those who are in Christ Jesus, those whose faith is in God, we say thanks to them because as we thank them, we bless God. Bless we those who help us. Blessed are the poor. Blessed are the tired. Blessed are the, you know, so on. Right? Thanks be, thanks be to God. So Jacob goes in before Pharaoh with his son Joseph, the Lord of the land, and blesses Pharaoh. Thank you, Pharaoh, for, for giving us a parcel of land and allowing us to live in your nation as we sojourn here. What, a word of, what, what would it be like if the people crossing our, our, the southern borders of America would come in and be thankful um, and then seek to serve themselves. Now, and I think there's something to be said for that in the next part uh, of this text. And this is, this may sound a little political, but I think it's practical as well. Um, Joseph and Pharaoh prepared the land for the famine by by taking a portion of the harvest each year of the seven years so that there would be food in the seven years uh, of the famine. And, um, but, the, but the people of Israel did not put anything away for themselves, or at least not enough. Um, they were not self-sufficient. And, and what happened? Well, first they bought food with their money, then they had no money. Then they bought food with their livestock, then they have no livestock. All they have left is their bodies and their land, and they were forced to give their land to the government. Uh, we're at a time in our nation, very specific, and it, it's happening not just in the United States, but it's happening in many nations, where people's reliance has turned from themselves to the government, to the nation. Um, there was a time in the United States where you didn't rely on the government for anything except the protection of the national borders and um, perhaps interstate commerce uh, and, and the enforcement of laws, right? You had U.S. Marshals. Um, but everything else was handled at home. You provided your food, you worked hard, um, if, if you weren't able to provide for your family in a time like a famine, your neighbors helped you. But you didn't, you didn't go to Washington to get that stuff. You didn't go to, in the case of Wisconsin, Madison, in the case of Michigan, Lansing, um, to get these things. You look to your neighbors, you look to your, your congregation, your community, um, and we were self-sufficient. Here's what happens when you're not self-sufficient, when, you, when you're not prepared to weather the storm. Um, you give your money to the government, and then you give your livestock to the government, and then you give yourself and your land to the government. The government likes that because it makes them powerful. It makes them, and, and, and they become an idol, a god uh, to those who serve them. Buy us and our land, and we with our land will be servants of Pharaoh and give us seed that we may not die. So Joseph bought it. Joseph, the Lord of the land, bought all their land and, and their loyalties to Pharaoh, um, except for the priests, except for the priests. The, the Pharaoh already took care of the priests, different 
situation than what we have today. Um, although in some nations, it's a state church. Um, and behold, Joseph says, behold, I have this day bought you and your land. Um, here's seed for you. Here, here, now you can have, you don't have to go buy the seed now. Um, you can have the seed. But Pharaoh gets one-fifth, right? One, one-fifth, right? One-fifth belongs to Pharaoh. Um, for four days you labor, the fifth day belongs to Pharaoh. Uh, and the people are happy. You saved our lives. Pharaoh has saved our lives through Joseph. May it please my Lord that we are servants of Pharaoh. Let that be a warning. Let that be something you think about. So Jacob lived 147 years, and when his time of death drew near, he called Joseph to him and said, If I have found favor in your sight, speak to me kindly and truthfully. Don't bury me in Egypt. Don't bury me in this land of sojourning. Don't bury me in this place I don't belong. Bury me with my, with my fathers in Cana. Bury me back with Abraham and Isaac. And so it will be when they, when they leave Egypt in, in 450 or 500 years, they will take the bones of Jacob with them. Our trust is not in the government or even in ourselves, but our confidence in Christ is in Christ to get us through all things. That's not misplaced trust. That's trust that's been fulfilled for us in Christ Jesus. That we know. And we know that we have nothing to fear in this world um, when we confess Christ and live as that gift to other people, right? When Jesus was asked, what is the greatest commandment? He said, love the Lord your God with you, all, your, all your heart, body, mind, soul. This is the first and greatest commandment. The second is this, love your neighbor as yourself. Between these two is contained, is in, in, in these two is all the law and the prophets. Okay. We are to love God with everything we have. And we are to love our neighbor as we would care for ourselves. So if you don't love yourself, it's okay to ignore your neighbor. But if you love yourself, then you should love your neighbor equally. Bonnie says, I shouldn't have said that. But you know what? That's the way it is. If you love yourself, which, which you do, you get out of bed, you feed yourself, you clothe yourself, then you should love your neighbor. Because the love you express to your neighbor is the love that Christ has put into you. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let's look to our prayer of the day. Lord Jesus Christ, so govern our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, that ever mindful of your glorious return, we may persevere in both faith and holiness of living. We live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Prayers for ourselves and others on this Monday morning. i got to flip back here to the beginning of the month in my little little prayer book here the first week um, remember the first week of of prayers in this little prayer book follow the order of the Lord's Prayer so uh, the Sunday the Sunday prayer was uh, stuck together pages here the Sunday prayer was uh, focused on on hallowed be thy name which what is what Sunday morning is about um, Monday morning focused on thy kingdom come Lord Jesus Christ, Son of David, your eternal throne in heaven fulfills the promise made to your father David. The visions of Holy Scripture depict that throne in utmost glory, yet you arrived at your heavenly coronation by way of humility, meekness, mercy, and grace. You were born not in a palace, but in a low estate. You rode no war horse into the city of Jerusalem, but a humble donkey as Solomon before you. In love for your own people, you submitted to the earthly authority of Pontius Pilate and were crucified with a crown of thorns and purple robes of mocking. Yet how true were the words posted above your crucified head, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Now you are risen, ascended, and reigning with all authority in heaven and earth. 
as my heavenly king, send your word and spirit to conquer whatever regions of my heart I have withheld from the righteous reign of your kingdom of grace. With your wisdom that exceeds that of Solomon, rule over my mind, which is darkened by worldly thoughts. In your goodness and love, direct and order all my ways, that I may sincerely believe and live a godly life before you, this and each day of my life. In your name I pray. Amen. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we ask you to be with those who are ill. Oh, you know, we forgot the creed. We forgot the creed. We forgot the Lord's Prayer. Must be Monday morning. Let's continue with the creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And we are bold to pray as our Lord taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Hey, Pa, I didn't see you drop in there. Good morning. Uh, now, for those in need of body or soul, Lord, we ask your blessing and your grace and your mercy and your comfort, especially upon Peter, Karen, Olive, James, Pat, Lois, Don, Brianne, and all who call upon your most holy name. Grant them comfort and assurance that in Christ Jesus, all things are being worked for their good, even if that good is the demise of the end, the, the coming end of their life. But for those who are suffering, uh, may their care, caregivers have wisdom and compassion. Grant this in Jesus' name. Amen. Almighty God, merciful Father, who created and completed all things on this day when the work of our calling begins anew, we implore you to create its beginning, direct its continuance, and bless its end. That all our doings may be preserved from sin, our life sanctified, and our work this day be well-pleasing to you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. See, there it is. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God who gives us life, sustains that life, until he calls us to our eternal rest in him. God's grace be with you, and we will see you again here, uh, yeah, tomorrow morning for our daily devotions, Tuesday morning for our daily devotions. God's blessings upon you this day. God's peace.